Alrighty y'all, today we are going to go over how to draw something up in Fusion 360, export it into a file format that can be used in Lightburn, and then cut it out on the laser. Over the course of this video, we will be working on this stand here, which I will be using for my Fantasy Challenge knife that I built on my other channel, Redbeard Ops. If you are interested in the design or the files for this stand, I will be putting them on my Etsy page. Uh, for a fairly low price to buy and download or if you're one of my patreons already I'll put it on patreon as well. So let's get started. This is the stand that we'll be using for our project as you can see It's made out of about five parts here, but just for demonstration purposes. We're going to go over to a fresh uh, Project and we're going to draw a shape So this is a fresh project. You can see there are three axes the X Y and Z I like to start off by uh, looking at the square at the top right so I can get my orientation. So we're just going to draw a simple uh, shape here or a sh simple object essentially. So I'm going to go to top. So we're looking down at the object we're going to draw. And then I'm going to click on this create sketch button on the top left. It's going to ask me what plane I want to be in. So I'm going to hold down the shift button, hold down the mouse scroll button and I can pan around. And I want to be in the top, drawing on the top position, which is this one. So I'm just going to click on that box. And now I'm open to start drawing in the sketch. So on the sketch, you have basic lines, uh, like most AutoCAD features. You have uh, rectangles as well. So you can draw squares and rectangles. This stuff's all pretty easy to use, really. Uh, so in this situation, we're just going to make a random shape. So I'm going to draw a box. Say I want it to have specific dimensions. I want this box to be two inches wide. So I hit the two on my keyboard and then I hit tab to bring it over here. And I say I want it to be about an inch. So I have a two inch by one inch box and I want to put some uh, wavy lines in it or maybe a curve. So I hit the spline and then I, uh, I find the middle here. You see how it snaps to the midpoint. And then I want to draw it all the way over here. Press enter. So now I have this curved line. Really simple operation in here is to trim. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight everything. I'm going to hit this trim button on the top left. It looks like a pair of scissors. And I'm going to left click and hold and draw over these lines and it trims them away. Okay, so uh, we have a shape here. I want to put a hole in it. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, Select the circle button, find my midpoint, come down to somewhere around the middle, draw a hole, maybe 0.3 inches. Okay, so now we have we have this sketch. And say this is the part that you want to make. So the first thing to do here, if you want to make multiple parts and try to fit them into each other, like I did with that stand, is you'd want to extrude this. So you can come over here to uh, solid, and then hit the extrude button, click on the face that you'd like to extrude, and then you can type in the inches. So if you're using a quarter inch material, you type in 0.25, and now you have a shape. So you can't really tell it's a shape yet because you have to pan. So hold down the shift button, then hold down your mouse button and pan. And you can see that now we have an item, a 3D item that is a quarter inch thick and it is the shape that we just drew with a hole in it. So here's your, here's your basic shape, and say we wanted to now cut this item out on our laser out of maybe a piece of quarter inch plywood. First thing we would do, uh, since we went about it this way by making a sketch first, we would go to our sketches over here on the right, and you can see that when you highlight this sketch and click the little I button, it will show up on your screen. So uh, just, to, just to illustrate that, we can go to bodies, we can click the I button and make that body disappear. Then hit the sketch, and this is our original sketch. Then hit the visualization for the body again, and here's our body. So our body's made off of that sketch. And actually, if you change that sketch, it will change that body. So since we started with the sketch, uh, this is super easy. All you have to do is go to your sketches, right click on it, and go to uh, export or save as DXF file. So I'm going to go ahead and click that and save it into my downloads. Give it a name. 
Save it. Okay, so that's one way. Say that this sketch didn't exist. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and delete this sketch. And now we just have an item. So say you have an item that you have been given or you downloaded and you don't have a sketch for this item. You can come over here to your body. You can select the top plane that you want to create a sketch on. So select the plane, right click, go to create sketch. And it just created a sketch of this plane. You say finish sketch. And now that's stored in your sketches. So we'll turn the body off and the sketch is turned on. So you can see that sketch right here. It's a little uh, opaque, but you can still see it. And then you do the same thing. You right click and you go to save as DXF. So that's, that's one way to get a sketch out of a body if you didn't create the sketch to draw the body. So now that we have that DXF file, we can go over to Lightburn. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to open up Lightburn. This is a blank Lightburn image. I'm going to find my DXF file in the directory that it was saved to. So in my downloads folder, I'm going to click on that file and then I'm going to drag it over to Lightburn. When I release, you will see that that item is now in Lightburn and the dimensions are the same. So we can come over here and check those dimensions. There's a measure feature right here, object. And I'm just going to select this top line. If you recall, that top line was two inches on the dot. So there you go. You have the two inch mark on that line. You can see that under segment length in the little pop-up box. So this is our part. And then you do the same thing you would normally do on any other part in Lightburn. You figure out your speed and power settings. If I'm cutting this out of a piece of eight ounce leather or something like that, uh, this speed and power is actually pretty good, about five millimeters per second and a max power of 80. So with our more complex project that we've been talking about, the stand build, I'm going to go ahead and pull that one up. So this is what the stand looks like, pulled in the light burn from Fusion 360 sketches. You can see that we have our five items. We have our big base plate. We have a smaller base plate that's outlined in green here. Then we have the front support, rear support, and then this is kind of a crossbar that connects the two together. So I decided to put my emblem on the crossbar and then uh, put a QR code to the build video of the knife along with uh, Fantasy Challenge 2021, 2022. So whoever buys this knife will also get the stand, uh, which I think is a pretty nice touch personally. The QR codes are super easy to make. You come up here to Tools and select Create QR Code. You'll get prompted with a uh, box after you click and drag where you want your QR code to be. So say I wanted to make one right here, this box. And then all you do is you paste your URL into this raw content section here. And once you do, it will create a QR code uh, that's a link to that, to that URL. And you can also test this. So I'm going to cancel this one. When you come over here to preview, so you have to use fill on these, not line. Uh, but if you come over here and you right click, you go to preview, you can zoom in on that QR code and scan it with your phone to verify that it actually goes to the right link. So this is the project. I normally start moving stuff around once I actually get into the shop. What I mean is I, I start moving stuff around on here as I'm getting everything framed. Depends on the size of wood that I'm using and things like that. But these are all the components. I'll move them around. Uh, these settings may change a little bit, but I think they're going to be pretty good for the quarter inch birch that we're working with. So let's get into the shot. So before we can cut out our stand, I want to do some test runs on cutting a piece of quarter inch wood. To do that, I'm going to just set up a simple circle here and then do multiple passes until it cuts through. And I'm going to count those passes. This is one way for me to figure out like how many passes I need to do at 80% power in order to get through the wood. I've done this with 100% power, but I've been told not to run these diode lasers at this high power setting because it actually degrades the laser. So I'm going to redo that test at an 80 power setting just to see how many cuts I'm going to need to put into the program. I'm going to run this test at a 5 millimeter per second speed, 80% power. And I'm just going to bump this up to like 15 passes. I'm going to stop it when we actually get through, but I just want to have 15 passes in there so the program doesn't stop midway. Before I get going, I'm going to turn on my air assist and then hit the start button. All right, 
right, so as y'all can see, I already made a mistake here. I, uh, I had it locked in there as fill instead of cut or instead of line. So I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to change this to line like it should have been from the start. I may actually uh, move this guy over a little bit just so that doesn't affect my test. So I'm going to move this to the right a little bit. Reframe. That looks good. I'm going to turn the air assist on and uh, run this job. It looks like we made it through the wood in four passes. So that's what we'll roll with on our stand and see if we get everything cut out. One note on the stand is to uh, try to orient it in your machine to work off of absolute coordinates so that if you did run it through four times, four passes and it didn't cut, you still know where it is on your bed. You can home the laser and then recut that one piece and hopefully uh, you, know, you'll, you won't ruin the piece completely. Whereas if you're just positioning the laser and starting from where the user you position the laser, it's way harder to do that. So using absolute coordinates really helps out with operations like that. All right, so we have our fresh piece of wood in there. I'm going to go ahead and frame on these three items on the top left and see where the laser lines up. I'm going to try to get a little bit more frugal with my cuts here. So to do that, I'm just going to throw in a square here. That's 12 by 12. So this is, uh, this is like a tooling layer essentially. This is one board, 12 by 12. And it really helps me plan out, uh, you know, my next cuts. Good deal. So I got plenty of space with two boards. Uh, obviously, I can't get it all out on one board, but but that's okay. We're gonna move this around a little bit, and then uh, and then frame again. to cut this out. I've changed the cut layers to have four passes at 80% power and five millimeters per second. I'm going to turn on the air assist and uh, get this job started. Also note that I've honed the laser so that if I have to recut this project, I can just home the laser and then run through one of the lines again, say if one of these pieces don't cut out right the first time. So let's rock and roll. Alrighty, so this is how our cut turned out. These pieces all came out nice and crisp. I will say that I had the air assist off on this bottom base piece, so you can see some slight burning on the edges, especially in this corner back here, but uh, that is what it is. If you're gonna do this, make sure to turn the air assist on, especially with thick wood like this. 
Uh, this is going to go on the top like so. You can glue these two together. Then you have a front support, you have a crossbar, and a rear support slash rest. And these just all pop in these holes. Like that. But that's how it all goes together. I have scanned this QR code with my phone and it brings me to the URL for the YouTube video, which is great. Yeah, so whoever gets the knife is also gonna get this stand. I'm probably gonna ship it to them in pieces like this and then they can just apply some super glue to these tabs and glue it together. One thing I'll note is you can see the charring is coming off a little bit. So what I'm gonna to try to do here is spray it with some ballastol. This is just a, an oil. This stuff is great. You can use it to clean firearms and whatnot as well and knives. But I'm just gonna spray a little bit of this on a cloth and try to wipe off the majority of the excess of the, uh, of the charring. All right, I figured a coat of oil couldn't hurt. Uh, now that I think about it, it may not have been the smartest idea considering someone's gonna have to glue this down the road, but uh, some super glue or wood glue should do just fine. Uh, but yeah, we'll put this thing together real fast again. Okay. Have a nice little stand. Hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button down below. Consider subscribing to the channel. And uh, this is Redbeard Engineered, signing off.